Hey guys, this is John with Forward Talk, and we have the special privilege for this episode to be filming from, from inside Two Smart Cookies. They are an amazing local business with uh, great food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, they, they gave us the, the opportunity to film from inside, so we want to shout them out. Also, on this, on this Tuesday and Wednesday, if you order from Two Smart Cookies, those of you that are local to the Calcutta area, if you order from Two Smart Cookies and mention Forward Talk, they will give you 10% off of your meal. So please take the opportunity over the next couple days to patronize one of our local businesses. Throughout COVID-19, we know that it's been tough on everyone. And so we want to take the opportunity to support small local businesses as much as, as, much as possible. Hey guys, this is John Carroll with Forward Talk again. And today we have some really awesome guests with us, Gina and Victor Vera. We are very happy to have them with us today. Uh, Brother Vera, <coughs> pastor's down in Xenia, Ohio, and um, he's been a great friend to me over the last few years. We met through his son-in-law, Nate Batson, and uh, just been a great friend to me personally and then to Lindsay and I. Mm -hmm. And of course, Gina is an amazing songwriter, singer, uh, musician. Uh, she has written some incredible stuff. I believe you wrote the title track for um, Kenny Ro uh, a Kenny Rogers album. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And today we're going to be uh, today we're going to be talking with them about an addictions program that they have in their church. And there is a, a, a huge issue in in Ohio. I know there is a lot of places, but there's a major drug problem in Ohio. Here where I pastor in, in East Liverpool and in, in Lisbon area, there's major, major drug addiction issues here. And our church has been needing for a long time to get involved in that, that ministry. And, and I think it will be a key part of uh, revival going forward for our church. And so yeah. we wanted to take the opportunity to spend some time with you guys today to talk about uh, the, the program that, that you use at your church and how that, uh, how that has been going. And so the first question that I'm, the first question that we're going to ask is, um, is Lindsay has a, has a question for you guys here. Okay. So how did you guys get started with doing the addiction recovery program? Well, I will say this, uh, I got sick and tired of, um, of just preaching to the same people not, 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 nothing wrong with that. I mean, we love our congregation, of course, all of that, but I've got tired of just becoming comfortable uh, with what we had. We were able to maintain and continue to do all the things uh, that we wanted to do as a church, but we were not, uh, we were not seeing a lot of uh, new souls uh, come in through our doors. And uh, there was one Sunday it hit me um, that we've, we've got to do more than what we're doing. And uh, we had a, a situation or two in our church of uh, some of our families that were affected by uh, drug addiction uh, in their children. And uh, it really, it really was devastating. Won't go into the, the full story, um, but it really just shook their, their families, shook them. And, shook our church. And it shook our church. And I realized it, it can no longer be business as usual. We've got to do something. And so uh, some of the ones that were close to the, the situation, I asked them, I said, Let, let's, let's, let's take our message out into the streets. And I knew that Brother Yarnacek down in Wellston, Ohio, had a thriving uh, recovery program. And I called down and asked them if they would mind if we would come down and be part of that. I asked a, a few key people in our church if they would like to come. And uh, we loaded up a van. We must have took uh, 12 to 15 mm -hmm. that particular night. And what is- who, who had been affected in some way by this distant or close, or had a um, desire, you know- um, To do more. To do more. That we, we saw that, that this was, cut because to be honest with you, anybody, not, not to interrupt, but to be very honest, 
any kind of addiction program in a church, mm -hmm. um, it truly is one of the uh, most all hands on deck things that you'll do in your church. Yeah. You cannot have one or two people involved, one or two people that have a desire and it truly be successful or work. You can't yeah. have it once a month. You can't have it because addicts are addicts every day. Yeah. And, and it, it tr absolutely is an all, not to jump ahead or jump forward it, but it truly is an all hands on deck ministry. It, it changed, it changed everything of our church. Everything. Uh, yeah. Our, our, our complete mindset has been changed mm -hmm. uh, because we understand these people need us so much. And, and it's gotten to the point where we need them. Yeah. We need them. Um, mm -hmm. They're just such a part of us now. They're our, they're our babies. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we understand, yes, it is a sacrifice. But as we, have, as we went into this and we, we, we went down there, we had just a tremendous service. And, and they must have had over 100 people there that night. Yeah. Wow. And uh, we, we come home and we were so excited. And, and we begin to uh, put together a plan on starting our own recovery. And I can remember uh, we made it mention of that to the church. And uh, the very first service that we had, I don't think we had anybody there. Yeah, we, uh, we did. The very first service, we had like three people. But I mean, the, the, we had more people, more the workers. First, we had the first added. service that you had that was focused on, on the recovery. addictions the first recovery. recovery. Yes. Well, I was talking about the one when we, we was going to feed the city, you know, all oh, of the yes. homeless. You okay. know? We, we had turkeys and we had ham. We yeah. had the, we had the full fix and, and, but nobody showed no up for came. that. No <laughs> we were all so discouraged. We're like, we want to love this city. Everything. Well, they hate us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 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 but we, we, we forged on and we, uh, put together a recovery program. And the first service that we had, we did have four people that showed up. Oh, wow. Four people. Yeah. It's, it's so easy for us often. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's unique to Pentecostals, but we, because we are Pentecostal and that's where we spend our lives as in Pentecostal churches, it's an easy reference point for us. But it's so easy for us just to become comfortable with just having church with us. Just, yeah, it's so yeah. easy to get, especially, especially if the church is big enough to where, uh, you know, a pastor can be full time or, uh, to support the few little programs that we do for yeah, us. It's yeah, so easy yeah. to become comfortable in, in that, in that area, that little, that little spot. But man, if we are not reaching, if we're not reaching people, then we are not fulfilling the great commission, the mission of the gospel. Yeah. And, you know, since I've been here at point of mercy in uh, Lisbon, Ohio, uh, you know, I've been preaching about, I've been talking about the, uh, the, the, problem of drug addiction in this community in this area and it's and it's mm -hmm. it's a terrible terrible problem east liverpool is a hotbed for um, this region for for drug addiction yeah. but just talking about it preaching about it and even praying about it isn't going to fix isn't going to fix the mm -hmm. uh, the situation right. at some point right. james 2 says that you have to put works with your faith yes. and at yes. some point you, you, somebody has to become actively involved in 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 the situation and dealing with it one on one, and so that that's what we're hoping to to begin to do. So, what program do you guys use to uh, to do these classes, these uh, services with with the addiction recovery program? What material do you use? Okay. Uh, well, we use several different things. We, we have not been like completely committed to one, um, one program, I would say, because we wanted to be unique. Yeah. We wanted to mis minister to our city as those needs came yeah. to us versus being locked into, you know, well, this week, this is the lesson this week, this yeah. is the lesson, you know? So basically when we started out, we have a unique situation with the way our church is built that we have the sanctuary and then we have the long hallway, the kitchen in between, and then we have the fellowship hall. So we would start in the fellowship hall and we would do whatever class we were going to do 
that week. Uh, we, we would do, we, we use templates, like we, we've used Celebrate Recovery. Um, right now we're using um, Sister Beth Bouse's Be Free. And she's um, amazing, amazing. She woman. is amazing. I love that woman. Yeah. And, uh, but, but we've used several different templates. Um, and then we also, sometimes we, we don't exactly have a, a uh, steps class or whatever if we have a special speaker that comes in. We kind of just let them tell their story. Um, but we started where... You guys are probably hearing in the background, we're sitting in a restaurant today, and so they're taking food <laughs> on the phone. So. All right. Awesome. <laughs> tell, tell us what's there. We'll tell you what we want. They, yeah. have, they do have amazing food. It's a little There's restaurant right next to our church called Two Smart Cookies. Literally, oh, I'm sweet. joining they're our still property. They're the public, but they... Yeah, they let us come in just to film. Nice. So we're awesome. going to be doing a commercial for them, like... <laughs> We're, I'm sorry to interrupt, but because we're talking about no. involvement in the community with the addiction recovery thing, we wanted to also connect it to a local business, especially during COVID-19, and try to help you know help our one of yeah. our local businesses here. So it's right. That's amazing. Real close to our church too, so it's like that's amazing. Right. Joint. <laughs> so all right, so go ahead. I'm sorry about that. So we would start in our fellowship hall and we would have like whatever class at the beginning, just to give you a really quick history. We had started a recovery class about maybe five years before that. And uh, so I, I kind of started that. And I, the, the third night I started talking about how when you're sick, you have to admit that you're sick. Yeah. And then you go to a doctor and a doctor says, you have something inside of you that needs to come out. So yeah. they take you to a hospital. They take that bad thing out. They, they sew you up. But you're not, you're not well at that point still. You know, they take you to recovery. But you don't stay there. Yeah. You don't stay in recovery. Eventually, they move you to a room. Then they let you go home. And you, you, you know, hold a pillow on your belly and you cough easy and you do it but then there's one day that comes that you you put your feet on the floor getting out of bed and you realize hey you know this doesn't hurt anymore you know what I mean you can you can move more free in it day by day by day that you move from recovery into deliverance yeah well oh I love we that, had, that that deserves a like right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this right now that deserves a like <laughs> so uh so i'm telling you we had tears we, we had our biggest class that that uh, third week we had tears people were like i've never heard anything like this well they go back to the recovery place in Z the women's recovery center in xenia and um i'm not gonna give all the details here but when when they went back and said i've never heard anything like this they said that we we don't have to stay in recovery that we can be delivered that Jesus came to deliver us. Well, as you can imagine, man, that was, we were cut off, you know, they, they wouldn't let any of them come back. And, and you know, uh, I, I really feel like I let the devil defeat me on that. Okay. And I, and I would say, I even wrote this down here when we were talking earlier, one of the problems with recovery classes or starting a recovery program in church is that, as you said, it, I don't know if it's a Pentecostal thing. I just know that it's usually a church thing. If something doesn't work fairly quickly, we, we give up on it. Yeah, you know, we, like it's not our season. We like yeah, to say that. Not we, our we love to spiritualize quitting, don't we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we love to yeah. spiritualize quitting. That's true. That's so true. <laughs> but that but with this, life too, if you haven't liked yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> but with this, you it's not something that happens overnight, and and you cannot quit and you cannot give up you these people have to know like your children they have to know you're not going to give up on them yeah you're not but you know no matter how time many times they fall no matter what happens yeah. you're not going to give up on them so when this came and, and the lord really spoke to my husband to get us started in this we had no clue what a big investment it would be no we really did it's not a commitment. Um, it is a, it is a commitment of time. Yes. yes. Commitment of time. It's an investment of finances for your church. It's, it's wear and tear on your building. Yes. Wear and tear on your building. I mean, you know, 
So uh, do you guys do you guys provide the transportation to the meetings as well? We we help. We help. They they bring a 15 passenger van. We fill our 15 pass, passenger van, and then we have uh, a, another van that goes out into the streets yeah. and picks people up because word has gotten around that the, the, this group of people. Uh, they are a net, they have a network. It's a network. It, they, all of these addicts, they know each other through the yeah. city of Xenia and they connect somehow, some way. And yeah, if there's anything good going on, they want to be part of it. Yeah. So the, the, the network the, gets the word out. And so whenever we get a call, we'll go wherever they're at. We pick them up, but we start an hour beforehand. And, uh, and to be honest, a lot of them will jump on that van to come and get a free meal. Yes, yes. Uh, not, I, I'm gonna say 99% of everybody that comes the first Sorry. time, they come for the free meal. Yeah. Oh well, because what we've learned, <laughs> when you feed their physical self, yeah. when their hunger's gone, when their, their natural hunger is gone, and that, and that pain in their stomach is not there, mm -hmm. then they can connect to the spiritual hunger they don't even know they had. And so you, you know, provide a meal every week for them. Every, every Monday night. Every Monday night, Brother Carol. Uh, we get there. It, it's amazing because uh, through our security system at, at the church, I start getting um, alerts that our, our kitchen team is showing up uh, two hours ahead of time, beginning the meals. Uh, we get people that come in, set up tables. We get, uh, we get uh, uh, the ones who serve the food. Uh, start showing up a little bit early. The van drivers start getting there early. The security team starts getting there. The cleanup early. crew. The cleanup crew hangs out later to clean up. But we, we started, like I was saying, we start with four, went that way for about a month, build it up to about 15. And uh, now it's not nothing for us to have 80 to 100 every Monday night. That's amazing. We have, we have baptized 100 and uh, over 170. In the last two and a half years, but everything has changed, Brother Carol. Yeah. Everything has changed in our church. Uh, people's mindsets have changed, um, and, and I don't know how some may feel about this. And I was a little um, uneasy, but we put out a one of the, the smoking. Uh, the we have we, a smoking section. We there. really have a smoking <laughs> section in <laughs> our church. That's awesome. <laughs> Because they come and, and it's part of who they are. And Holy we smoke. Were, we they're addicts. They're addicts. Yeah. yeah. And there, there was cigarette buds all over the, the front of the church. So we put out a uh, one of those containers where you put your cigarette buds. And, uh, and, but, but we have through the, the years that we've been going now, uh, we, have, we have taught on that. We have had them come and lay their cigarettes on the altar. Yeah. God has yeah. delivered them. And uh, now they're telling others, but we have to, we, we're just being patient, yeah. long suffering, and we love them. We don't condemn them. We teach them. Yeah. And we're patient, you know, and but you have to, the, everybody has to realize these people are on a journey. Yes. Yeah. They truly are on a yes. journey and most of them are unchurched, but you know, the ironic thing about it, I'm going to say there's, there's a good percentage, maybe 20% of everybody that's come to our church through recovery have some sort of, of connection with Pentecost somehow. That's interesting. We've even, one of our ministers twice, one of our ministers in our church, an extended family member that they only knew when they were just small, young girls or whatever, has got the Holy Ghost come up to them and said, you don't know me, do you? And it's their family member. They didn't even oh, recognize them. Or so, you know. Amazing. So, uh, so you said, what, 170-something that you guys have baptized? Yes. How yes. many have received the Holy Ghost? Well, <laughs> we have had, I, I would say we've had 40, 40 to 50, probably more than that. But there are times some folks will say they have the Holy Ghost or yeah, they got the I Holy Ghost. You. Yeah. We try to build on that. We don't try Absolutely. to tell anybody. We tell them, get it again. Yeah, get yeah it again. exactly. <laughs> Renewal. Yeah. <it's> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Renew. Keep getting it. And, you know, and so. With that you know, demographic that already has a Pentecostal uh, background, that, always, that already has a connection to the church. Yeah. Well, the coolest thing is that 
you know, like, okay, like for instance, what I was telling you earlier, WRC. So when they, when they took women's recovery, women's recovery I got sent. What does that mean? It's Women's Recovery Center. Okay. W- in and it's a, okay. it's a place that the court mandates that you either go to jail or you go you. to the Women's Recovery Center. And they're, what they're working to do is get their children back or, you know, or whatever the case may be in their lives. A lot of them just want to recover a, a, a family, their family in their yeah. lives or whatever. Because at that point, everybody's given up on them. That's yeah. what we have. To, you know, that's what everybody has to realize. By the time they get to us, most of them, their family has wiped them off. They have nowhere you know, else family. to go. They have, they no, have yeah. no place else to go, literally. Yes. But Brother Carol. One, one thing I want to make sure I get in here. I've been pastoring now going on my 21st year. The greatest thing that we've been able to do in our 21 years is to work this recovery yes, program. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's incredible. It has been, it has been the most, effective. most effective, but it's mm-hmm. been the most rewarding yes. thing that we have done. It's, it's a sacrifice every Monday night. We, we go to the church. We, we spend as long as they want to be there. Mm-hmm. And it, it is a lot of work, but but every service we have some of our uh, new brand new converts in every one of our services, mm-hmm. and uh, no, they're not as far along as what others are, but they are growing, and you can see that every service, and that is the most that, rewarding thing that, that I've experienced in twenty one years of pastoring. Yeah, uh, I wanted I wanted to tell you that this uh, women's recovery center, the one that stopped us from having it first. Well, fast forward five years. Now, uh, drug addiction is an epidemic in our city. Yeah. And when they heard that we were having recovery classes, they asked us if they could come. Yeah. So, so they, they brought a few girls and they loved it. They went back talking about it. There was a supervisor at WRC who said, if you'll let them go, the same people there that stop us from having us still there. They said, if you'll let them go, she said, I'll take them. I'll take them in the van. Cause we're not allowed to pick those girls up. They okay. have to be right. So, so she came Well, about two months into it, she got uh, another job and left and the girls were devastated. Cause they're like, nobody's going to bring us. Well, there was another girl that took her job. Another lady, her name is Michelle. I'll say, I'll tell you this story really quick. Cause it's so amazing. So she, she takes her job and the girls are like, Michelle, we don't know how we're going to get to AXC recovery. You know, we want to go to that. And so um, she said, I'll take you. I'll take you. So she starts coming. So about the third week that she was there, my daughter, Cindy and I, we, we took her to lunch right after Sunday school. And um, the first thing she said, uh, she said, I need for you to know, I'm never going to be one of you. (laughs) <laughs> she said yeah she said I don't mind bringing these girls and they love it and I, I appreciate everything you're doing but I'm just not like you guys yeah I was like great Michelle I said here's the thing I'm the only one that can be me Cindy's the only one that can be her I don't need you to be me yeah. I love you just like you are you're part of our family we love you she had come to visit that day so she said okay now I need to confess something I said okay what's that and she said so I've heard of the Holy Ghost. I have family members that speak in tongues. I mean, she was saying it just like that. Like, speak in tongues. <laughs> and she's like, but I got to be honest. I'm scared of it. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's okay too. I said, Michelle, listen, the Lord has you on a journey just like he has all these girls on a yeah. journey. She's a recovery at, recovering addict from 10 years or more. And I, I said, so the Bible says that he would lead you and guide you into all the truth that he wants you to know. And I said, he's guiding you. You're on a journey. I said, don't get ahead of yourself. But whatever God has for you, I promise. Cause I don't want to like overload her. You know, I wanted just to be her friend. And, yeah. and we came back that day. So fast forward again, it was maybe two or three weeks after that. So <laughs> I had, we were so busy that I had, I hadn't got to tell Victor what happened that day. So Monday night, we have this, we, like I was telling you earlier, we started in the sanctuary back then. Now we just do, I mean, in the fellowship hall, now we do everything in the sanctuary. But we started back there. When we came into the sanctuary, there was already this amazing, uh, 
Well, what we do is the, when the girls come in early, they put requests into a basket. Then the rest of our church goes into the sanctuary as soon as they get there, um, as soon as the girls get there, about an hour before, and they have a prayer meeting and they're praying over all these requests. So everybody in, in recovery knows their requests are being prayed for. They're being prayed for while they're in the class. So there was already this great presence there, you know, and, and in the, in the um, fellowship hall, it, just the spirit of the Lord was there. People were crying, you know, and, and I knew something good was going to happen. So we go into the sanctuary, man, as soon as we open those doors, those girls start crying, you know, that, that have this little, somebody always talks a little bit in the sanctuary. And then we have kind of like a cleanup, which means somebody comes behind whoever's speaking and they kind of, um, Transition. transition it toward like an altar type service to subtly transition it toward an altar type service. And then the girls come up or whoever's going to sing and we start singing praise and worship and they just, man, they flood the altar and they start praying. Well, Michelle, uh, who is another denomination, she decided she felt like she needed to pray for sister Kelly who was praying with a, an addict, you know? So she comes up and she's getting ready to put her hand on Sister Kelly to pray for her. She's going like this. And Victor walks down to her and he says, Michelle, do you want the Holy Ghost? And she was like, what? <laughs> and he said, do you want the Holy Ghost? And she said, I do. I really do. And he said, I want to tell you what we're going to do. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. I'm, you're going to put your hands in the air. I'm going to lay my hands on your head and I'm going to pray the prayer of faith over you. And you are going to believe that God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Do you believe he's going to do that? She starts sobbing. Yes, I do, pastor. I do. So he put, he laid his hand on her head and he started praying. I mean, hard, we could hardly get around her. It would happen that quick. I'm not joking. A minute later, she was lost. She was receiving the Holy Ghost, was lost in the Holy Ghost. She, when she got done, she threw her head onto my husband's shoulder. I, when when uh, she picked her head up, he had two perfect little eyelash marks on <laughs> his shoulder. But she, she said, I never dreamed it could feel this way. But she had told us, I'm never going to be one of you. Yeah. About four weeks later, on a Sunday morning, she comes to me and Cindy. She says, I have to tell you something. She said, I was at my, my church the last three weeks. And she said, God spoke to me last week and said, tell your family that this is not where I need you to be. Wow. I have a place for you to be. She said, so I need to tell you, this is my home. I want to make this my home church. That's awesome. She's been coming ever since. She brings people. I mean, it is amazing. Now, they bring those girls to us. Yeah. And there's so many of us, so many of them that come, they have to alter every other week because they, they don't have enough vans or whatever, you know, yeah. we, we want them to be able to come. But I mean, it has been amazing what the Lord has done. Was it just women or are there also men that are in the group? As well? That particular one is just women, but we also. But, but it grew from there. That word started getting out throughout, like I said, through this network, men wanted to start coming. So we had the opportunity to start going into the Jeremiah Treehouse, okay. and now we have we have men that come too. And um, the the great thing about this is is because you don't know who you're touching, you don't yeah. know what their potential is. Yeah. And so through the Jeremiah Treehouse, we came in contact with a young man by the name of Brian, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, the Lord has just he has just did a work. Mm -hmm. Life. And he started what he calls um, through him street through ministries. him street ministries. And so now we had to give him a barn uh, there at the church. And he collects. He goes to all these stores. He collects uh, toothpaste, and toothbrushes, to and, all and toiletries, toiletries, and all that kind of shoes, t-shirts, socks, and all <laughs> coats. And so now he goes to the street ministry, and whatever their needs is, he gives them food and clothing and all and now he's bringing people right off the street so this is just kind of snowballed and it's just like i said you never know who you're touching mm -hmm. and who's going to be the key to really uh bring about a revival in your church mm -hmm. that uh you know that's going to just change it and what's amazing about that is like 
with the people that Brian has been bringing, he's brought people, homeless people right off the streets. Yeah. But their families who had given up on them yeah. has seen such a change in their life. Yeah. That two, at least two of those, those people have won their families yeah. to God. Like one man, his daughter, son-in-law, their three children, there, I mean, she was at the altar Sunday, just uh, just praising God, and uh, it, it's been amazing to watch. Brian put, posted a picture. I wish I could show you guys a picture. He said, "Before Jesus, and after Jesus." That's awesome. They don't even look like the same guy. Hey, if you if you want to uh, if you want to send me that picture, yes. Whenever okay. whenever the uh, our producer gets this ready for YouTube, we can actually put that picture on the screen for everybody awesome. to see it's if you, amazing if you want to text that to me yeah absolutely it, it has just transformed our church i, I mean it's, awesome. it's just changed everything uh now there's been some trial and error through it all you know we, we're, we're all, we've learned some things and uh because not everybody's there for the right reasons but yeah of course but so. people are truly hungry they really are there's a lot of hopeless uh, people out there that's looking for a second chance. Would you guys and, would uh, would you guys be willing to uh, come come up here uh, soon? Um, sure. To uh, we, we, mercy, do a maybe do a Saturday uh, meeting where you talk with the people that are interested to hear about kind of the details of it, and then preach on Sunday and include that in. And what yeah, we would love to. Uh, all right, love we'll to. get together soon on a date um, to have you guys come up and talk about the program, and and of course preach to the uh, preach to the church, and of course um, it would be awesome to have Gina singing and and all of that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, we will get together and do that soon, man. Uh, uh, what what an incredible what an incredible program it's. There, I think there has to be a point in a church's history where if they are going to really grow, they have to shift into some kind of, some kind of ministry that, that changes, like you have been saying, that changes the, the focus of a church, the dynamic, the culture of a church that goes from just being a, a church group to a okay. uh, a comfortable church group where we're comfortable with yeah. the way things sure. have always been mm -hmm. to shifting into a church that actually does what the church is supposed to do, which is minister, mm -hmm. minister to well, the community. It's, it's that way. I mean, it, it has, um, not everybody was on board at first, you know, not, not everybody's caught the vision. Yeah. But through the process, probably, not everybody probably still has caught the vision. No, 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 they haven't. Mm -hmm. Um, but through the process of it and people seeing people's lives changed, they've wanted to become part of it now. Yeah. And so, and there's so much, there is so much, uh, room for everybody. Yeah. You know, I mean, you wouldn't think, but we need folks to, to take care of the nursery yeah. because it's hard to keep the moms, you know, cause we, we bring them from all areas of the, of the city. It's hard yeah. to be able to, to teach someone if they're, they're holding their kids or trying to uh, watch so, over so their Let's children. talk about that for a second. And I know you're about to, but what are some of the, apart from whoever's teaching the, the people that are there for recovery, uh, what are some of the side things that has to be done to facilitate that? So you have nursery, you have. We have van drivers. Um, I also am wanting to get uh, a couple of our men to maintain our vehicles, make sure they're clean that they're, they have fuel in the, in the vehicles. Um, and then, uh, cause that's, that's the first part of it. You got to go out there and get them and bring them to, to your church services. And you have to be faithful, not only on Mondays, cause they're going to get something on your, or whatever day you choose. Uh, they're going to get something on your recovery, but they're, they're going to want to continue then to come to your services. Yeah. So there's the commitment also that we're going to bring them to our services. Yeah. So there's uh, a lot of cases. So there's going to be transportation that will need to be provided to get them to right. Sunday. Yes. Right. We have we have people that come in. We have uh, there's a team of people that do the food preparation. Yeah. There's another there's another team a team of people that that inventory the food to make sure that we have the food that's there. Yeah. That makes out the um, 
the menu for the month. Then we have servers who come in, three or four servers that serve them. Then we have to have people to clean up. And uh, we also have to have security there because yeah. security. you don't want, you know, you don't know, like I said, don't know the people that come, but when they go, do people, children go into the bathroom, you want to make sure that there's proper security there. Uh, we have ladies that come and we want to make sure that everybody is being treated and respected. And, and, you, and you have to make sure like little things that you don't think about, like if someone has been in the bathroom too long. Because yeah. what you don't want to do, if you're especially if you're dealing with a with an already established recovery unit like WRC or Jeremiah Treehouse, if one of them could come to our church and get high in our bathroom, yeah, it would be a we're issue. done. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, we're done. Absolutely. Then that's what we had to consider when Brian started street ministry and we had homeless coming because most of the homeless people are addicts. But the reason that they have not checked into rehab centers or something is because they're also, they also hate authority. Most, yeah. you know, most, it takes them a while to understand that process. So when they come together, the problem with that is the addicts, they don't yeah. come with bags, with pack, backpacks and stuff in them. And they don't come with all that. Well, the homeless people, everything they own in their life is in their backpack. Yeah. Which means whatever they're taking, whatever they're not taking, you know what I'm saying? So, so do, you they, guys do, do you guys do security checks where they have to check bags? and They don't have to check bags at this point um, because we, we were, were, we were getting ready to start a thing where, where there was hanger, you know, they could yeah. hang their, give it to the security guard, hang their back, like get a number. However, word got around. Brian is great for this. You need somebody that can talk these street smart. Yeah. Street smart. Cause Brian can say, Victor can say, you're not doing that here. And they're like, you're not going to tell me. Brian can say, dude, you do that. And you're going to deal with me. And they're like, yes, sir. You know? <laughs> so, cause he knows what to say to him, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but so word got around. And so they, they, they watch it. They, you know, we haven't had that issue at all, but you still need someone eyes and ears that are watching and listening. So that's, know? that's the first part. And then when they move into the sanctuary, you have to have alder workers. Yes. Yeah. You know, we're, we, we, we have, you have to train your people how to pray mm -hmm. with women and with men, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and also younger men uh, and older men, you know, there, there's a way that you just, most of them don't want you laying your hands on them. They don't want mm -hmm. you laying their hands because a lot of them uh, have come out of prison and, and that's a, that's something you just don't do. You just don't touch somebody from the back. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have altar workers. And then, like I said, after baptizing a hundred and over 170 of them, we have to have someone to make sure that the, the baptismal tank is clean and it's ready every service. Yeah. We have to make sure that our tiles are clean, that we have our baptismal robes, that they are ready, that the baptismal room is ready. Mm -hmm. And so all of that. Those pray singers ready. Pray that, singers. Message, that connects. They love that so much they love the preaching they love all that but something that keeps them going is having that music yeah. in their life you know yeah uh, and they absolutely like they every like we can't leave a, a monday night without singing freedom i mean we're all <laughs> sick of those songs yeah, freedom, you're you sick of like yeah. it's overdone it's yesterday but <laughs> it's their anthem yeah, you know? yeah. so they, they love it and the song clean Oh Lord, they go crazy over that song. And just, but you have to have people that are willing to be there for the duration, you know? Yeah. But it, it's one of the things that has surprised me and Gina, people with that we thought didn't have a place, or they thought they didn't have a place. There was yeah. nothing for them to do. They yeah. have found their calling. And it's really neat to see that, you know, they have found yeah, their place where they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so I would say for the most part, 80% uh, of our church uh, is on board and we probably have, of course, you know, between 80 and 100, we probably have 30 or 40 at least every Monday night of our own church people there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's involved. Awesome. That's involved in some kind of ministry. And, and there's people in our church that never, you know, you've got a, a certain small group of people that they come to your church but they're not really invested as far as they, they don't really do anything. They come, yeah. and I, I don't even know how to say this. They, 
easily, but they come to church and they're part of you. They're members of your church, but they're they not really involved. Have, they just come to have church. They come to worship. They don't come to do Yes, that. exactly. Well, what I've noticed, we have a, um, a page, a recovery page that everybody in our church has been invited to. So they, they've all, anybody that wanted to, you know, come on the page, whatever. And so all of our addicts that are on there, like once they, they get out of WRC or no, whatever, and they're working jobs and they're trying to get their kids back in there, or they might need diapers or they might, they'll come on and say, Hey, I, I get off work at four o'clock today. I green cats can take me, but I don't have anybody to pick me up. Is there anybody that could pick me up from work or whatever? And I have seen people that have never done anything no. at our yeah, church that's come on and say, give me the address. I can, I can get you, you know? So, I mean, I, we have seen an amazing um, transformation. transformation in people that that never had a place, but have found their place when people don't even know it's happening. You Man, know, it's, it's been pretty amazing. That is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. What a, what an amazing story! It's it's a God thing that has happened. It, I, yes. We don't we don't take any of the credit at all. It was it was God. Uh, the road the 35 that goes through Xenia is called Heroin Highway. Oh wow! Yeah. So many people have there's a, there's a filling station, a gas station, uh, a few miles from our church that's on 35, and the police have told us that that is the main place that people pull over, and they have went to the door of mm -hmm. cars, and people still have the needle yeah. in their arm. They've used um, more Narcan there at that gas station than any, yeah. any place. And they have found them, some people, they have found them dead right there. Yeah, we car. have Narcan in our safe at our church, just in oh, case. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we have to have that. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. So, like you said, it's, it's an epidemic in Ohio, mm -hmm. like no other state. Yeah. And I think it's a wonderful ministry for any church and that wants to get outside the four walls. That's yeah. right. That's right. We have to, we have to, as the body of Christ, make a difference in the world in a real tangible way. And, um, uh, of course, COVID-19 has kind of, for the last few weeks, has, <laughs> has uh, affected everybody's lives in different ways. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the idea that churches in a lot of states were put on the non-essential list yeah, has to change at some point. Our yeah. churches have to be so vital to our communities mm -hmm. that if a, if another COVID nineteen happens in our future, then our yes. government has to take take note of saying right. that that mm -hmm. we deal with churches in a way that we don't yeah. deal with any other business because they mm -hmm. are that vital to our communities and the health of our communities. Yeah, man, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk with us about this. And we are going to be scheduling a time with you to, uh, to come here to the church, to talk to, uh, to, talk to our congregation, uh, to preach, and to help us along uh, the journey of getting started and doing this in our community. Because I've, been, I've felt it in my spirit from the time that I've got here. We've just never um, have actually taking the leap of faith to actually start doing something about it. And I, I really feel like this is the time mm -hmm. in our church's history for us to actually move forward with a real solution to the problem in our community. Brother Carol, can I say this? Uh, um, and I don't want to take too much time, but take your time. We, we are, we're so thankful for a couple of uh, ladies, uh, young ladies in our church that got the burden uh, they were connected with some of these families that had lost their sons through uh, uh, drugs, and uh, they um, they took they got the burden. And uh, for me, as a pastor, that uh, trying to you know pastor the whole church and take care of all of the things that I need to do, going to the hospitals, nursing homes, preparing for ministry, uh, traveling some here and there. Uh, with all of those things, I would not have been a, an effective leader for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these young ladies, they they have taken the lead. Of course, yes. we're very much involved in it. They run mm -hmm. everything past us. And, but they have taken the lead, and they schedule the services, and they schedule the van drivers and the 
and the menus and all of those kinds of things. They and make sure the team is working. Yeah, they make sure the team is working, which has helped us. And 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 it it is it is just uh, it has gotten such a hold of them. They're so passionate about it that I don't have to call them and say, "Hey, is this and that uh, taken care of?" But they they just uh, run with it, and that's been such a blessing for uh, my wife and I. So you know that, that that's key, and hopefully you know folks that's thinking about doing a ministry like this, you can get a couple of people that really are passionate about it. Yeah. That can kind of lead it you know because it's 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 a full-time job a absolutely full-time. well i'm in the meantime i'm going to be praying and believing that god is going to god has the right people here prepared mm-hmm. the right people here that will be willing to uh, commit in those areas and i believe god's going to to help us um man i'm excited about getting you guys up here it's going to be awesome hopefully yeah. I, I don't know what your June looks like. Um, it's clear, coincidentally. <laughs> okay. Everything. Co- COVID cleared it for so you guys. So you guys can come on a Sunday, right? A Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. We will. I will be uh, looking at a calendar, and we will nail something down for sure. Uh, to get awesome. it. We would love to do that. We appreciate you uh, even considering us to, for this uh, forward talk man we yeah. uh, we love you guys you guys are awesome and uh, we love you guys too thank you for taking the time to do this uh, to do this with us today and as as always thank you for joining the conversation to reverse the silence through forward talk if there's anything we can do anybody has any questions please uh, connect with us we, we will try to help you in any way we can And we are certainly going to do that. Mm